Today on Hands On Photography, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite tools inside of Photoshop, and it's the paintbrush. Okay, I know that sounds weird, paintbrush, but trust me, it's an awesome tool, and you're probably wondering what the heck does that have to do with post-processing photographs. I'm going to show you how. Stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I am so happy to be able to join you this time in uh, January 2021. The year 2020 is behind us, and we are going to create and dominate and move forward. Welcome to you. If this is your first time catching the show. Again, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. This is a podcast where I love to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. Uh, on this particular episode today, we're going to look at the post processing side of things. And actually, it's more so of a particular tool regarding your post processing. But again, if this is your first time, go ahead and, and just subscribe to the show right now go to our website twit.tv slash hop that's twit.tv slash hop for hands-on photography and you'll see all of our subscription options right there including our youtube channel apple podcasts and spotify sign up on all of those platforms give us a rating and a comment and all of that good stuff to help push us up in the rating so other folks can join our hands-on photography community I truly do appreciate you doing that, boosting the signal and uh, supporting the show. OK, so now let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. OK, so previously we've talked about the wonderful world of Photoshop in Lightroom and how you can integrate it into your workflow as far as photo post processing and photo editing. Today, I want to look at Photoshop and talk about a particular tool in there that can be used as part of your post-process and, and eventually part of photo editing. But we'll talk about that in a later episode. And what I'm talking about is the actual brush tool inside of Photoshop. Okay, so here's a quick little history nugget, if you will. Photoshop, when it was first developed and, and thought of, it was not necessarily a photography post-processing app or a uh, photography manipulation app. Photoshop was actually designed more so for people wanting to do digital art and painting. So that's why you have things like a brush tool inside of this massive photo manipulation program that we have. But what I've learned over the last several years is that brush tool can be quite useful for certain selective edits and selective post-processing inside of your photograph, whether it's a landscaping uh, photograph or if it's a portrait or what have you, that brush tool comes in quite handy. We've talked about it quite a bit on um, doing some frequency separation when we're doing some touch-ups of high-key lighting and low-key lighting, smoothing out skin. But I want to dive a little bit more into the capabilities of the brush tool. So let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop and take a look at just a little bit of a breakdown regarding the brush tool. So I'm going to switch my screen here like so. Boom. Here we are. So this is Photoshop and this is just a plain old white background. Nothing to it. This is typically what you would get if you opened up Photoshop without opening an image. And if you hit B on your keyboard or head over here to the left hand side of the toolbar, you'll see a little brush icon and that is your brush tool. And as you see from the tool tip, it has B for you to use the uh, keyboard shortcut. And down here, you'll see the little bit of a, a color palette. You'll see a black square and a white square. That black square says that's what my brush paint is going to be right now, black. And if I were to hit uh, X, it would switch to the other one in the back, which is white. But I don't want to do white on white right now. I want to do black. So let's hit black here. And let's just take this random brush, this the standard default brush, and just draw a line or so on the screen. And what you're seeing is how I have mine set up by default, which has a 100% opacity, as you see up here in the upper left. And it also has a flow of roughly 2%. So when I brushed on the screen, you didn't see a lot of stuff. 
your Photoshop may be set up at 100% flow and you'll see a difference when I paint across the screen. So let's paint across the screen and now you get 100% flow. Okay, so you're probably asking, why do I have my flow set up the way uh, instead of the default? There's a reason for that. As you're painting inside of Photoshop using your mouse, or in most cases what I use is a Wacom tablet, but it still works fine with the mouse. As you're painting along, uh, you're going to be able to get a better feel for the actual paint that you apply into your image. So if I wanted to paint something lightly using my mouse, and it's set to 100% flow, I don't care how softly I click this mouse button, it's still gonna be a pretty dark spot like that. If I want to change the opacity, yeah, I can do that. So let's change the opacity down to say 30%. And if I click here, it did change it a good bit. It's a lot lighter and it's not as dark um, uh, and, and opaque, if, if you will. So let's change this back to 100%. I like using flow because of again, you get a different feel and it's a whole lot more uh, natural and a whole lot more control with, for, um, for you using a mouse or a Wacom tablet. So I'm gonna take it back. I usually try to stay anywhere between two and 5%, something like that in most cases. And if I just click one time on the screen, I get a very, very light brush um, spec right there. Let's make my brush size a little bit bigger and see if it, so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna click again with it set at a flow at 5% and you see what happens. You can barely see it there. So let's take it back and I'm gonna do a comparison. That's 5% flow. Now we're gonna take it to 100% and take the opacity down to say 5% or so, somewhere in that area. So now the opacity is lower, I'm gonna click and you barely see it and that's fine. But what happens if I want to try to really just enhance a particular area, just like I would if I had a paintbrush and just paint and paint onto a canvas. So let's use this 5% opacity with 100% flow and see what happens. As I hold the mouse and just keep painting and painting and painting, you notice nothing is really happening. It's just making it a bigger <laughs> soft gray circle. Compare that to using 100% opacity and 5% flow, and watch what happens. Just hit a little spot here on the canvas, holding it down, and I still haven't let go of my mouse, but notice we now have a buildup with the paint. As it's brushing over the same area, the paint starts to build up over that area, just like it would naturally if you had an actual brush in your hand with some paint on the end of it. It's a pretty slick tool. And again, it's all about control. So let's do a new layer here and, and play around with the tool a little bit more. Let me show you another example. So I'm gonna fill this with, with white again, like that. Okay, so if you look at this brush, let me bring everything back up to 100% again. And as I just dab on the screen, it's, it's pretty dark in the middle, but the edges of it is sort of of a bit of a gradient and soft around the edges. That's because I'm using a soft brush. If you look at this menu at the top here with your brush, you'll see a lot of different options there. You got a size and you got a hardness. If I take that hardness all the way up to 100%, the edge is gonna change. And that's fine for certain applications, but for me with photo uh, post-processing, Nine times out of 10, I want that edge to be 0% in, as far as the hardness goes. I want it to be really soft because it's gonna look a lot more natural when I'm brushing in certain effects and things like that. But again, your mileage may vary. It just sort of depends upon uh, what you're gonna do with your particular project. Now let's go back to that brush menu. There was a whole lot of different things in here. You see a couple different folders. Uh, this screen says general brushes. This is what's included with Photoshop once you get it installed. And it's a lot of different styles here. You see soft edges, round, hard edges, so on and so forth. And all of those have different parameters set in place. Uh, but then you can go to Adobe's website and check out a whole bunch of other brushes from Kyle Webster for free. And there's, there's a bunch of different creative brushes in here. Notice these don't quite look the same. This one is called Chunky 
<laughs> charcoal. Okay, so let's click on chunky charcoal and notice the icon even changes and take a look at the pattern that it gives you when you just click and paint. Lots of cool ways to use this type of brush here. So yeah, you can get brushes from from Adobe for free, in addition to the ones that already come installed with Photoshop, or you can um, find your favorite photographer or favorite uh, creative digital artist. They may even have some Photoshop brushes that you can buy or download and import for free as well. I have a couple brushes that I've installed from the wonderful my good friend, Miss Lisa Carney, and uh, I'll show you some tips on that in another episode. But I did just want to play around and show you the, the, the power that's built in with these brushes. But before I go, let me show you one more thing. I, like I said previously, I use a Wacom tablet. So let's go back to the default brush real quick. So I'm going to select this one. I use a Wacom tablet. And the beauty of having a Wacom tablet is you can put in a lot of pressure sensitivity with the regards to your brush. So I'm going to click on this menu here. It says... Um, it says brush settings. And if you don't see that in Photoshop, you can just go to window and select brush settings and it'll pop up over there for you. So I have brush settings here. OK, so right here at the top, it has what's called shape dynamics and it allows you to play around again with the design of the shape and what that means as far as size jitter. Jitter means randomness. So size randomness means the more that number is equated, it's going to change the size as you brush across the, string, the screen. Not going to mess with that right now. I want to look at, say, the scattering, how you can mess with that. And you have pin pressure to change how it how it works with um, how hard you press down on your Wacom tablet. So let's show you a quick example here. Click off. And I'm going to decrease my brush size so you can see here in this space. Got my Wacom tablet. And if I brush across, it looks a certain way. But if I click down really hard, it's a little bit harder. And if I brush hard and get lighter, you see that it changes the opacity just a bit. And you can really dial in those settings with the uh, transfer and, and pin pressure here. So we can change that that way, change the scattering, push that up, push that down the count jitter. I don't particularly like to mess with the count jitter, but shape dynamics and the scattering, all of those really make a difference. So change it this way, control, make it pin pressure and just dial it in to see what works best for you. Notice the icon even changed more so to an oval type. So I'm going to click right up here like that. And I'm just barely pressing. But as I make the same stroke and press down, things get a little bit darker and a little bit more, again, just a bit of dynamics to it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to play around with this stuff. All right, so now I've made a whole mess on top of my screen. I'm gonna go back to my main camera. <laughs> and say that is it for this week's episode. Again, this was just a brief little introduction to the brush tool inside of Photoshop. In some future episodes, we will play around more with using a Wacom tablet. You can get these for under a hundred bucks. A lot of times you can get one for about $70. I have links in our show notes to get you one if you're interested. Or if you don't want to use a Wacom tablet, you can still use your mouse and utilize different settings inside of the brush tool to make your work just really, really pop regarding post-processing. All right. That is it for this week, folks. Thank you again for all of the tremendous support. Thank you again for 2020 being as awesome as it was for us as a photography community. And now we're going to continue to just push forward with 2021. If you have any feedback or questions or comment, feel free to shoot an email to me over at hop at twit.tv. I try to answer every single one of them one way or another. May not always be on there, but I do try to reply back and answer. And if you have any image, tweet, image critiques or uh, feedback that you'd like to share with some of your photos, feel free to send those too. But I won't share them on air unless I have your written consent. So just let me know. All right, folks, get on out there and play around with Photoshop and play around with the brushes and let me know what you come up with. 
So, all right. So until next time, you all safely create and dominate. Take care.